What's up everybody, nice to see you again. Or if this is the first time I've had the pleasure, how do you do? Today I'm gonna to be watching the 1992 film, My Cousin Vinny. I recently rewatched Goodfellas and Casino in short order and boy, is Joe Pesci captivating and mesmerizing. So I wanted to dig into all of his other works I haven't seen and I stumbled upon My Cousin Vinny, which I used to see on my grandfather's shelf on the VHS cassette tape all the time. And so today I'm digging into it. Martin Scorsese is unimpeachable. He's fantastic. And Goodfellas in particular, Joe Pesci is so arresting and interesting and intriguing and funny. Funny how? I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you? No, you're not a clown, Joe Pesci, but you are amusing and so insightful and piquant. So I'm excited to get into my cousin Vinny. Thank you for being here. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and like this video. Leave me some comments down yonder in order to facilitate with the algo rhythm. And if you want to get early access and full length unedited reactions, go on over to the Patreon, Mr. Valentine Reacts. I appreciate all of my patrons over there. You guys are salts of the earth and I look forward to your continued support. And a special shout out goes to Elijah J and Russian Paul for being prestige worldwide members over there on the Patreon. They get early access up to five days early and unedited full length reactions. So I doff my proverbial cap to you two and to the end, baby, through thick and thin. So come on in, the water's fine over there on the Patreon, but I appreciate you watching this here on YouTube. You guys are amazing. I, I like connecting with people, even in the virtual public square. Uh, you know, those of a like mind, cinematically, televisually. But I digress. Let's get into the 1992 film, My Cousin Vinny, starring Joe Pesci. Oh, let's do it. You know, okay. It's got protein, we need protein. Beans are protein. Things make you fart. We got a convertible. That's airtight logic. But the convertible is not airtight, which is the point. Beans, beans, good for your heart. The more you eat them, the more you... Yeah. $21.67. Can you fill this up? Just in case you didn't remember what the name of the store was called. Look, I forgot to pay for this. You could have gotten caught. What if somebody saw the laws are medieval down here. You know what the minimum age for execution is in Alabama? Medieval. 10. 10. <laughs> All right. Can't even hit puberty before you face capital punishment. I'm not a fan of capital punishment, but I am a fan of lowercase punishment. There's a cop behind us. A cop? There's nothing to worry about, all right? There might be. Just calm down, all right? There's a cop behind us, that's all. There's nothing wrong, there's no problem. You never want to see a cop behind you under any circumstances. Probably nothing, all right? Might be a tail light or something. Just relax. We don't have any money for bail. Bail? We don't need money for bail. Nothing's happened. Now, just relax. Nothing. We're getting pulled over, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, technically, circumstantially, he did steal something. What if it is about that stolen item? Show me your hands! Yo! Show me your hands! Get him up! Get him up! <laughs> Yo! Now put your hands on top of your head! All right, this cop is starting at a 10. Well, that just dramatically escalated. I just heard that someone shot Jimmy Willis. He's dead. Oh my God! Who would do such a thing? Oh. Wrong place, wrong time. Am I right? Do you know why you're here? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. It was a stupid thing to do. Oh no. Fully, I'll sign a statement or whatever makes this whole thing easier. Oh man, dude. This is in an atrocious direction. I mean, it wasn't planned out, you know, just like, you know, it just happened. Did Stan try to stop you at any time? I like the Dutch angle. No. I mean, he was. Oh, the ambiguity of this is stressful. We're going to run enough electricity through him to light up Birmingham. We were All friends right. at NYU. <laughs> That's daunting. Then I forgot about the can of tuna fish, and then we we left. Did he catch you with tuna fish? Is that how it started? Oh, bucko. No, he didn't say anything. He's in for a rude awakening. 
At what point did you shoot the clerk? I shot the clerk. Yes, when did you shoot him? I shot the clerk. Hey, Dean, we need you out here. I'm in the middle of... No, he shot the sheriff. He didn't shoot the clerk. He shot the sheriff. Yeah, time out on the play. Can we can we deliberate for a second? I thought I was here for stealing a can of tuna, not stealing someone's life. Hello, Ma. We're in Wazoo. Not not too good, Ma. We uh we've been arrested. <laughs> Why is he laughing? Not too good, Mother. Uh, we're encumbered. They're trying to set us up as patsies, Ma. You know how corrupt it is down here. They all know each other. The clans here, they're in bread. They sleep with their sisters. Yo. <laughs> Some of them do. <laughs> read the room. Read the room, my brother. Read the room. Well, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. You think he'll do it? We got an attorney in the family. Great, who? My cousin Vinny. Roll credits. Oh, Cinema Sands, get out of my noggin. Joe Pesci, he's cool as a polar bear's toenails. I submit. What's wrong? Nothing. Call shimmy in our highway a little bit. And you got mud in your tires. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all. You ever hear that? Mud in the tires? No. She never heard it. She knows everything about cars. <laughs> She's an aficionado. You know what happens in these places? Yeah, I know what happens in these places. And sometimes there's a big guy named Bubba no one wants to tangle with. And he'll protect you. Bubba. A sex slave and do whatever he wants. There's only the two of us here. Catastrophize here. Don't catastrophize. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Zip that mouth. This is not dirty work. You fellas have a lot of growing up to do, I'll tell you that. Ridiculous. Come on. Got somebody for you. Greasing the palm a little bit, greasing the wheels. If I was in your situation, I'd want to get through this whole thing as quickly and with as little pain as possible. So you got that right. As to make it a simple in and out procedure. What's the matter? Relax, relax. A simple in and out procedure. You know, maybe we should spend a couple of minutes to get, you know, to get acquainted before we. Uh, before we get to it. Uh, What's wrong with you? I don't want to do this. <laughs> Double entendres, am I right? But, you know, what are your alternatives? It's either me or them. You're getting fucked one way or the other. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Ah, he's trying to protect his chastity. You think I should be grateful? Yeah. I mean, it's your ass, not mine. <laughs> I think you should be grateful. I think you should be down on your fucking knees. I'm sorry, I didn't know it was such an honor to get a visit from you. Hey, I'm doing a favor here, you know. This writing is mastery. One hell of an ego you've got. What the fuck is your problem? I did not come down here just to get jerked off, no. you know. <laughs> no, no. I'm not jerking you off. I'm not doing anything. Uh, wait, this is amazing. Hold on. I'm just taking care of sleep for you. This is some incisive writing. <laughs> Top tier comedy. Holy cow. Kind of cases have you had? Well, I expect he's done burglary, grand theft auto, drugs, right, Vin? Surely, surely. And don't call me Shirley. Well, actually, this would be my first foray into the trial process. I haven't had to go to court yet. Knock on wood. A novice of sorts. It's not promising. How long have you been practicing? Almost six weeks. <laughs> Wait a second. You graduated from law school six years ago. What have you been doing since? Studying for the bar. Six years? Uh, uh -huh. Wow. That's a lot of studying. Because Vinny's a little wet behind the ears. I didn't pass my first time out. That's okay. He probably passed a second time, right? I'm afraid not. Three times a charm? Not for me, it isn't. Yeah. Well, for me, six times was a charm. Six times. Because Vinny is not exactly inspiring a vote of confidence here. Just, uh, rest not well. Code of time. Oh, sorry. Well. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with my hands. 
Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah. How long have you been practicing? Almost 16 years. Any murder cases? <laughs> Quite a few, yes. And what was the outcome? Uh, you know, win some, lose some. <laughs> so he's just going to lie through his teeth with no compunction. This is going to be great. Vinny's first case. So, what can I do to help? I'm sure he has a couple of things in mind. That's not exactly kosher. <laughs> that is startling. Excuse me. You guys down here hear about the ongoing cholesterol problem in the country. America, the leading cardiovascular champions of the world. You never heard of grits? Sure, sure, I heard of grits. I just actually never seen a grit before. What is a grit anyways? It's made out of corn. Them hominy grits. Hominy? Oh, shucks. How do you cook it? Well, you simmer it in water for 15 to 20 minutes. Put it on the plate and add butter. So, you gonna eat it or not? Just eat it, eat it. Eat it, eat it. No one wants to eat it. Weird Al Yankovic, anybody? Huh? What do you wear? I'm uh, wearing uh, clothes. <laughs> I I Asked and answered, Your Honor. Asked and answered. When you come into my court looking like you do, you not only insult me, but you insult the integrity of this court. That's so. A lack of etiquette? And I mean, you comb your hair, you wear a suit and tie. And that suit better be made out of some kind of cloth. You understand me? Who's this honorable judge? Fashion police? Joan Rivers? If I hear anything other than guilty or not guilty, you'll be in contempt. I don't even want to hear you clear your throat. Oh. How do your clients plead? Think I get the point. No, I don't think you do. You're now in contempt of court. Still doesn't answer. Would you like to go for two counts of contempt? Not guilty. Thank you. Bailiff be set at 200. Sardonic judges, am I right? Bailiff, please take Mr. Gambini into custody. His bail will be set at $200. This judge is for serious. Um, we can't afford to keep bailing out. I already cashed in half the traveler's checks. Ah. I tried hustling the money, but I got stiff, so I had to cash in. It. Oh, 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 what do you mean you got stiff? Uh -oh. See that stiff? And the plot thickens. And the plot thickens, Your Honor. By whom did you get stiffed? Stiffler from American Pie? The record scratch of hostility. Uh-oh. I think we identified the culprit with the fast, rapid push-in on the camera. <laughs> Why'd they catch his deep throat that chicken like that? I believe you and Lisa played a game of pool for $200, which she won. I'm here to collect. How about if I just kick your ass? a counter offer <laughs> I'm a lawyer we lawyers call that a counter offer let me see this is a tough decision you give me get my ass kicked to collect two hundred dollars hmm. wait that don't pass go either do not pass go very honest with you <laughs> nah I think I'll just go with the two hundred <laughs> <laughs> I love Joe Pesci man do I have to kill you what if I was just to kick the ever-loving shit out of you? <laughs> In your dreams. Oh, no, 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 no. In reality, if I was to kick the shit out of you, do I get the money? The moment of truth. If you kick the shit out of me, yeah, yeah, then you get the money. The feces comes flying out of his rear side. I'm going with option B. Kicking your ass and collecting two hundred dollars. Put him up, Vinny. Put him up, baby. We gonna fight now? Yeah. First, let me see the money. I have the money. All right. Let me see it. Show it to me. Produce it. Exhibit A, buddy. You can get it. All right. Get it. Then we'll fight. 
Is that a drip I hear? Yeah. Drip Bayless. Maybe you didn't twist it hard enough. I twisted it just right. How could you be so sure? Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. Dead on balls accurate. Dead on balls accurate. It's an industry term. Oh, we about to be balls accurate in a second. Uh-oh. Kids, close your eyes. We're about to start bumping uglies. Gotta get out of Dodge, bro. I looked up and saw two young men run out from the sack of suds. I know that actress from somewhere. And drive off like the Dickens. Miss Riley. Like the Dickens. Charles Dickens. I was making my breakfast. I saw them two boys go into the store. Then later I heard a gunshot. Is this a car? What is this, 12 angry men? Did I tell you the next time you appear in my courtroom that you dress appropriately? You were serious about that? <laughs> <I th> <laughs> <laughs> he gets arrested again. Yowza, fool me once. Shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. You killed a good old boy. There is no way this is not going to trial. Ah. Alright. Not exactly assuaging their worries here. <laughs> You're not allaying their fear. Oh, sure. No problem. I could win the case. I already got myself sent to jail twice. A crisis of confidence is afoot. I think that once you're out there and you're doing your thing out there, I think you're going to be really great. Aww. Really great. Emotional support. In proper dosage. If you don't fuck up. I mean, <laughs> with a little caveat, if you, if you decline to F up, that's fair. The girlfriend is representing a lot of balance, a healthy balance in the relationship. All right, I'm, I'm going with the public defender, too. I'm, I'm sorry, all right? I'm, I'm sorry. I just didn't know what little experience you had with this. Oh, man. I mean, you can't blame him, though. Look, by all appearances, they look cooked under his tutelage. Ain't nobody pulls the wool over the eyes of a Gambini, especially this one. Give me the chance. One chance. Question the first witness. If after that point you don't think that I'm the best man for the job, fire me then and there. No grudges. All I ask is for that one chance. I think you should give it to me. Yeah, he's like, hey, I lost a few battles, but I will win this war. Meet me at the crossroads. We can get on it. And I miss my Uncle Charles, y'all. Does that freight train come through at 5 a.m. every morning? No, sir. It's very unusual. Okay. He accepts it. Like, all right. Can you Xerox all the files on the Gambini, Rothenstein case for Mr. Gambini? <laughs> what? He shut that door with panache. He has to give you a list of all his witnesses. You can talk to all his witnesses. He's not allowed any surprises. They didn't teach you that in law school either. All right, so what actually transpires in this school of law then? Oh, he's dressed to the nines now, baby. Told me that freight train hardly ever comes through here at 5 a.m. in the morning. No, she's supposed to come through at 10 after 4. Oh, you linguistic wizard. I think it should be left up to the victim's families rather than the courts. Oh, uh, the defendants in this case are charged with robbing a convenience store. <laughs> then in a most cowardly fashion, shooting the clerk in the back. Now, there's sufficient evidence. Characterization of the events is convenient. Uh, Fry them. She'll do. <laughs> Dang. They have no record of any 
Vincent Gambini ever try in any case, entire state of New York. Now you fact check him, Your Honor. Yeah, well, the man is a seriously accomplished lawyer. If he checks up on this guy, his name will show up all over the place. I mean, it's pretty pop. It's probable. This is a probable story. No. Bad. Why is that? Because he's dead. Oh. <laughs> so he is litigating from the grave then. That's going to be his cover story. I mean, it's a, it's a probable plan, though. Because in the 90s, you could just say, oh, I'm this person. And it wasn't immediately accessible. Not unlike you're in school and someone says, hey, you got a girlfriend? Yeah, she goes to a different school. Oh, that is a form-fitting suit. Well, I hate to bring it up because I know you got enough pressure on you already. But we agreed to get married as soon as you won your first case. Me won uh, 10 years later, my niece. Girl, let's just get married. Jagged edge, anybody? I ain't never getting married. Lisa, I don't need this. I ain't slept in five days. I got no money. A dress code problem. Jeez Louise. In the balance holds the lives of two innocent kids, not to mention your <laughs> biological clock, my career, <laughs> our marriage, and let me see, what else can we pile on? Is there any more shit we could pile on to the top of the outcome of this case? Is it possible? <laughs> He's a phenomenal actor. Yeah, the deck is stacked against you. Stacked against you. When it rains, it pours. Murphy's Law. Papa Murphy's. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> what are you talking about getting away from you? I'm making waffles. The fuck is that? Even out in the woods, they can't get a respite so they can sleep. This is unprecedented. <laughs> Why you got Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, bah. Wow. Shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, he starts shooting indiscriminately. That's wild. Oscar Wilde. Uh, the aforementioned mud problem. Narrative symmetry. Am I right? Yowza. Slippin' Jimmy. Better call Saul. Or Slippin' Vinny, more like. What is my suit doing in a trunk? I had it clean. I thought it'd be a nice surprise. Go in there with a nice clean suit. Ta-da. Ta freaking da. You fucking shower, I'll get your fucking suit. <laughs> hey, little Yankee. Language. I got you two hundred dollars. You gonna kick the shit out of me now? <laughs> Why he launched his body at him like that? <laughs> oh, don't ask questions to which you do not want to know the answer. Yes, he will kick the defecation out of your rear end. <laughs> that is a very fashionable chic tuxedo he's wearing. The free says she. Free go. Doom, doo, 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 doo. All that pressure got Vinny down. This town doesn't have a one hour cleaner, so I had to buy a new suit. It's either wear the leather jacket, which I know you hate, or this. <laughs> so I. The lesser of two evils. I don't like your attitude. I'm holding you in contempt of court. Oh, here's a fucking surprise. What'd you say? What? Uh oh. What'd you just say? <laughs> What'd I say? Wow. Court stenographer, do not read that back. He said there's a freaking surprise. Counselor, if you wish to make an open statement. Oh. Counselor. He's snoozing at an inopportune time. But I'm still rooting for our cousin Vinny here. I feel like he's going to finagle away, going to finesse. Ladies and gentlemen of the of of of, of the <clears throat> is he got stage fright or on 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 January fourth 
fourth of this year, my client did in the today, Junior. Um, kill anyone. He he. Uh... This is outlandish. He's choking now. Everybody's joking now. Time's up. Over. Plow. This guy needs to snap back to reality. The two youths. The, the two what? Uh oh, what was that word? Get off of his dialect, Your Honor. What is a ute? Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Two youths. <laughs> Just put a little twang on it. A little bit of a twang. And you had just begun to make breakfast. You were just ready to eat and you heard a gunshot. That's right. I'm so obviously it takes you five minutes to make breakfast. That's right. Put the screws to this guy. Put it to him. Eggs and grits. Eggs and grits. I like grits too. How do you cook your grits? You like them regular cream? Call back, baby. Instant grits? No self-respecting southerner uses instant grits. I take pride in my grits. So. Mr. Tip. No self-respect. How dare you besmirch my name. Grits. When it takes the entire grit-eating world 20 minutes. As has been established earlier. That's good screenwriting. Are we to believe that boiling water soaks into a grit faster in your kitchen than on any place on the face of the earth? Poking holes in your argument there, fella. Were these magic grits? Did you buy them from the same guy who sold Jack his beanstalk beat? <laughs> Jack's the honor. Objection sustained. Are you Mr. sure about Chippen, that five minutes? Ignore the question. Are you sure? Cutting them down to size. Making a mockery out of him. Point. Are you sure about that five minutes? I may have been mistaken. You bet your sweet cheeks you may have been. I want him. Yeah, you do, Stanley. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna stay in prison tonight. Maybe I'll finally get some sleep. Doing good, huh? <laughs> this is an absurd and glorious movie. I love it. Love it. He's snug as a bug in a rug. Amidst thugs? your kitchen to the sack of suds what do we call these big things trees trees that's right his ability to sow seeds of doubt is tree mendis for a moment of two seconds looking through this dirty window this crud covered screen these trees highly implausible there because our cousin Vinny here is picking up some momentum Mrs. Riley, when you saw the defendants, were you wearing your glasses? Yes, I was. Over here, dear. <laughs> Follow my finger. Whoa. How long you been wearing glasses? Since I was six. Have they always been that thick? Oh, no. They, they got thicker over the years. <laughs> so, uh... Them glasses thicker than the snicker. My... This is 50 feet. That's half the distance. How many fingers am I holding up? Let the record show that counsel is holding up two fingers. Okay. Mrs. Riley. And only Mrs. Riley. How many fingers am I holding up now? Drum roll, please. Four. For sure not holding up four fingers to have the witnesses reports reviewed by a defense expert who might then be in a position to contradict the veracity of his conclusions that is a lucid intelligent well thought out objection <gasps> thank you your honor overruled this is a kangaroo court i tell you the clerk of new york and asked him what he knew about jerry gallo and you want to know what he replied did you say jerry gallo yes i did gallo with the g that's right Jerry Gallo's dead. I'm aware of that. <laughs> well, I'm not Jerry Gallo. I'm Jerry Callo. C A L L O. <sighs> this is uproarious, dude. All right. The fact that they can't vet this guy <laughs> more <laughs> thoroughly. 
is convenient and I am a fan. This works because it's just inside the realm of possibility for it to be playable narratively. Can I speak to the clerk? Okay, I'll be here. You can call back after three. Uh-oh. That gives you a stay of execution. Unless by some miracle you happen to win this case in the next 90 minutes. It's a death row pardon. Two minutes too late. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? Look how you're looking at me. Look how you... What does that look supposed to mean? I'm a piece of shit? Because I can't figure out a way for you to help? <laughs> ah, here's a good one of the tire marks. Could we get any farther away? Where'd you shoot this? From up in a tree? <laughs> I should ask you a long time ago for these pictures. Holy shit. You got it, honey. You did it. <laughs> the case cracker. Me in the shower. Joe Pesci is phenomenal. He is fantastic, dude. <laughs> he busted the case wide open with this shower pig, sweetheart. The most popular size of the most popular tire is on the defendant's car. Well, yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, you a prosecution arrest. Mr. Gambini. Uh oh. We got insight, light bulb moment. What is the common denominator or lack thereof between those pictures? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yeah. I yes. want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, my father was a mechanic. His father was a mechanic. My mother's father was a mechanic. My three brothers are mechanics. Four uncles on my father's. Cut from an automotive cloth. Mechanic necessarily qualify you as being an expert on tire marks? No. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Sit down and stay there until you're told to leave. Sayonara. The Chevy didn't make a 327 in 55. The 327 didn't come out till 62. Wasn't offered in the Bel Air with a four barrel carb till 64. Talk yo stuff. The defense is wrong. Are you sure? I'm positive. How could you be so sure? Because there is no way that these tire marks were made by a 64 Buick Skylark, made by a 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Objection, Your Honor. We... Hey yo! I find it hard to believe that this kind of information be ascertained simply by looking at a picture <laughs> the theatrics are very enjoyable to me right now what is pause attraction it's a limited slip differential which distributes power equally to both the right and left tires some sophisticated technology if ever i've heard of it but that didn't happen here the tire marks stayed flat and even this car had an independent rear suspension the proof is in the pudding Exonerated of all charges. Were both cars available in metallic mint green paint? They were. Thank you. You bet your sweet cheeks they were. How'd you like uh, Miss Vito's testimony? Very impressive. She's cute too, huh? Yes, very. It's not hard on the eyes. She might constitute eye candy. The Buick that the defendants were driving made those tire tracks. Come on, you could say it's okay, I know. Actually, no. It sucks to suck. This computer readout confirms that two boys fit the defendant's description were arrested two days ago by Sheriff Tillman in Jasper County, Georgia for driving a stolen metallic mint green 1963 Pontiac Tempest. <laughs> Your Honor, in light of Miss Vito's and Mr. Wilbur's testimony, the state like dismiss all charges. Cousin Vinny is the captain of the ship now. Look at look at me. Look at me. He's the captain of the ship now. Lady Justice wins again. Yes, I just personified the justice system. Sue me. But don't. Especially if you have Vinny. On your side. Good job, Mr. Gambini. 
Uh oh. The final thread is about to be pulled. Oh, snap, crackle, and pop. I mean, he's right, but for the wrong reasons. Oh, it's a nice twist. Nice surprise. What on God's green earth could that paper have said to back up his claims that he was, what was his name? Jimmy Callow? I had a friend send a fax to the judge confirming the very impressive legal stature of Jerry Callow. Jerry Callow, excuse me. You know, this could be a sign of things to come. You win all your cases, but with somebody else's help. You win case after case, and then afterwards, you have to go up to somebody, and you have to say thank you. A hidden benefactor. Oh my god, what a fucking nightmare. A ringer. <laughs> well, you're not gonna marry me now? No way. You can't win a case by yourself, you fucking useless. <laughs> Jeez. Ouch, put your claws away, kitty. You can add a burp into your wedding vows. You know, the best of both worlds. Now that is a clever, ingenious, touching, charming movie. A movie got the goods, which is expertly led by one Joe Pesci, who is, you know, has no flaw in this narrative, in this telling of a story about two college students on a road trip who get falsely accused at the wrong place at the wrong time of murder. And a little, you know, sprinkle of an homage, um, an emulation of the 1957 film, 12 Angry Men, which as I said, if you haven't go, if you haven't seen that film or my reaction to it, do that, do yourself a favor about the former, not the latter, I don't know. You know, I'm not going to say my reaction was that stellar, but the movie is, though. The movie is. And it reminded me of this, you know, the exploration of the justice system and the significance of what a jury does and is and its role in determining guilt or innocence on the basis of the body of evidence with in this movie just ramped up the humor. 12 Angry Men had a lot of humor in it, but this just really went balls to the wall. And I love the ambiguity of the language. You know, I'm a fan of language myself, a certain logophile on certain days. And, you know, the, the double meaning of when Joe Pesci first goes into the jail cell and his cousin is asleep and the guy doesn't, his friend Stanley doesn't know who he is. And he's using all the wrong and right words to insinuate a certain sexual maneuver that could also be interpreted as <laughs> his trying to get him out of a sticky situation through litigation. So this movie is quite enjoyable. It's, it's, a, it's a treat through and through. And it's like, uh, I want to say perfect script. That script is, is so delicately balanced and fun and intelligent and sharp and crisp and savory that you know i'm gonna watch this again right now just to get the <laughs> get the experience all over again now having you know understood where it was leading and wound up ultimately in the third act in the third act yeah this is uh it's charming man it's got some charm charismatic movie and joe Pesci just has a way about him huh he, he has a magnitude and a magnetism for dialogue and engagement in the telling of a story him being he's him being freaking six years no six months six weeks though as we, we the concentric circle gets smaller six weeks a lawyer six years out of law school and to be so uninitiated and learning on the job 
flying by the seat of his pants, we see him develop into a very formidable lawyer. You know, with little bumps, little starts, little hiccups <laughs> here and there, but he sticks the landing. He was wobbly out the gate, but he stuck the landing of successfully defending his cousin and his friend from fa being falsely accused of murder. I did not see this movie going this way. I had no idea what this movie was about. And that's the best cinematic experience to me. Not knowing the the even the gist of it. All I knew is that my cousin Vinny and it was Joe Pesci. And that scant knowledge really intensified and enriched the cinematic experience for me. So you can't beat these moments. It gives a gives me a feeling of, you know, adrenaline, a rush, a sense of affirmation and edification. Marissa Tomei is very effective in her role as well. The the automobile expert, which is so beautifully depicted earlier and woven into the tale later so significantly. And she, you know, her biological clock is ticking. So she wants to have the quote unquote American dream. She wants to have a, a family, a marriage. But our cousin Vinny, man, he is trying to get a foothold in the judicial system, make a name for himself, even if it's a, <laughs> an alias. And that's so that's such a funny choice from a movie standpoint to say that, OK, he's going to try to establish his bona fides through word of mouth and try to <laughs> try to claim this stature in the courtroom from New York, although you're in Alabama. And the fact that they're not able to fact check him that completely and exhaustively works for me. It works. I mean, one would think a few phone calls, but this you got to remember, this is the 90s. So it's not outside of the realm of possibility that this this agenda, this plan would work so as successfully as it did. So, yeah, this was fun. This was a funny movie. I had tears in my eyes through the jokes and the <laughs> and the absurd situations he found himself in. They wouldn't let my brother get any sleep at all, huh? Any sleep at all. You know, out of the frying pan into the fire. First, it was a it was a whistle in the morning. Then, then it was pigs in a train. And I like how that one was he a concierge. Vinny asked him, does that train always come through at 5 a.m.? He said, no. And he comes back and said, well, technically it's supposed to be 10 before 5. Get A, hey, miss me with these, you know, logical gymnastics that you're <laughs> displaying here. Uh, but yeah, it was fun. This was, a, this was a spectacular film, I must say. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you watching this with me. I had a hell of a time. I hope you did too with the video and... If you want to support your boy, go ahead and like this video. Subscribe if you're not already a uh, subscriber to my channel and leave me a comment down below. What was your favorite part? What are some other Joe Pesci films I should watch? Because outside, of, I've seen Goodfellas <laughs> and Casino more times than I can count. But I'm, I'm going to look into his work now because he is three for three for me. Have I seen him in anything else? I don't know. But yeah, uh, you can become a Patreon member. Early access, full length reactions. Appreciate all my patrons over there you guys are the best you know you guys are fantastic but yeah uh that was 1992's my cousin Vinny, and as always till we meet again